You know who guys I see care less about the small <laughs> stereotype, Andrew? What, guys who are like 6'5"? Ooh-wee, poutine! Yeah, yeah, you, you mean that we're still gonna hear it in the future? Ah! Yeah! Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here, and we are going to be reacting to Jubilees. Do all Asian Americans think the same? Yeah, I mean, I think there is a ton of stuff in this video that you can agree with, disagree with, but we gotta provide our analysis and takeaways. All right, so if you are excited, please hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys, and turn on your notifications. Okay, the first clip, Andrew, is about liking Asian food more or less than American food. Wait, describe American food, though. I just... I just thought of hamburgers. Boom, guys, this is a common thing that you come across. America is only 250 years old. A lot of people do not even know the foods that constitute American food. Is it some weird modern version of like British and German is it food? Orange, is orange chicken American food now? It's crazy. First of all, I do think America does have some good food, Andrew, but you know what I realized? A lot of Americans don't even eat good American food. Hold We're talking up. about Maine lobster rolls, delicious. Cajun gumbo, delicious. Uh, mup. Uh, Texas BBQ, delicious. Interestingly enough, only good in those regions. So with that being said, I do think that the majority of Asian Americans prefer Asian food over American food. David, you're making me hungry, man. I love Asian food, it's who I am, but I'm from Texas, so I grew up on like chicken fried steak and biscuits and all that kind of stuff. Dude. Come on, man. You're going to list those as the best American food? That's not the apex of American food. I, I've had a chicken fried steak in Fort Worth, Texas before. Hey, man, let me okay. tell you. Hey, let me tell you something, Andrew. Let me okay. tell you. I could tell you're not from the Lone Star State because if you were, you wouldn't question his love for them, for that Lone Star Texas Texas BBQ. has amazing Vietnamese food, too. Have you ever been to Bel Air? I was just denied Asian food for a long time. My mom wanted to be Caucasian. She wanted me to grow up as a white person. Yo, this is actually kind of funny because I do think this goes along with a macro trend in American mainstream society where about 10 to 15 years ago, multiculturalism, Andrew, became really cool. And prior to that, I think that the assimilation plan was literally a ladder, Anglo-Saxon or like whatever white was with the, was at the top of the ladder. And now the game board is just way more fluid. Well, I'll say this. So she's a hoppa. Her father is white, Caucasian. Her mother's Korean, right? I don't know where they grew up. Maybe they didn't grow up next to an H Mart or an Asian enclave. So yeah, I could see. Maybe there wasn't a lot of Korean opportunities for her to have that food. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a little late. But I think parents nowadays, like if they got a 10-year-old today, they're like trying to expose them to their... Uh, Asian roots. Let's just say this, man. If you're 10 years old, you are not going to have those like stinky lunchbox stories that the 45 year old kids where they got like beat up for having like shrimp chips. All right. So this next question is about whether the people feel pressured to date within their own race or not. Almost like if I don't bring home a Korean or a Caucasian, which is her preference. That often seems to be the case. It's like you can date white or Asian and everyone else yeah. off the table for some reason. Yeah, I mean, if you made me say this is true or not true for the older crowd of Asian Americans, I mean, like, oh, Asian people from Asia that raised us, I would say it's probably true. It's messed up. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Why don't you keep it real? Yeah, but I will say this. I see a lot of Asian people, like, moving to other parts of the world, and they're just marrying whoever's dominant in that country. Like, Asians are moving to Africa, and I see a bunch of guys marrying African women. So they're not going there to, like, marry, like, white women or even Asian women necessarily. So I guess, to me, um, for sure there might be some prejudice and, you know, old school thoughts of, of different people, but I just really think it's mostly based in whoever's dominant in that culture. And unfortunately, yeah, I mean, white people are still dominant. I grew up with a white father. Like, white people were definitely always an option, but then, you know, other groups of people, it's like, well, we're not really sure that they're, like, that great. Yeah, that, that's messed up. And I will say this, how do you know that train of thought didn't come from the white side? Uh, <laughs> um, but I just think, like you said, man, Asians are very hierarchical. If you look at whatever industry they're in, you know, like in China, the black players in the NBA are the favorite. Like they buy everybody's shoes, you know, Trey Young, everybody. I mean, they like Luka too, but Luka's like very dominant of a player. I would you know say I mean? LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan are all more popular than Jeremy Lin and Yao Ming in China. Yeah. I mean, I think that obviously Yao and Jeremy, they mean something different, but they are not the most praised. Tony Parker is huge in China. Tony Parker is not even popular 
in America. You know what? I got to give a shout out to our mom, man, because we were having a conversation about marriage with her, like, I want to say four years ago. And then my mom was just like, okay, Andrew, I don't care who you bring home, whatever type of person they are, but they just have to speak Chinese. And if they don't, I'm going to teach them. And I was just like, mom, you didn't even teach me Chinese. What do you mean? How are you going to teach her Chinese? But thank you for being open-minded. I appreciate that. I do think more parents moving forward are going to be like, all right, I don't care who you bring home as long as they're down with the culture. Shout out to mom. The next question is asking the people whether they think Asian stereotypes are funny or not. I think I'm just like tired of like Asian stereotypes and jokes are so played out. Yeah. If it's the same shit that we've heard for the last 50 years in like American culture, then like miss me with that. It's so boring. It's yeah, I mean, you can be tired of them, but what does that do? That's like anybody saying, man, I'm so sick of the way the rest of the mainstream society perceives me. Well, how was that actually going to change the way the mainstream society perceives you? Literally, the whole point is like they're, they're, they're thinking about how they feel about it. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. You don't control them. Yeah, I think a lot of people, when they say this, they just feel very like strong. They're like, yeah, I'm sick of these stereotypes, man. Like, get them out of my face, dude. And then I'm just like... Hey, I think we all kind of feel that way, but like, what are you going to do about it? I mean, I think you have to proactively work to break the stereotypes. Let's be honest, guys. Some stereotypes are more true than others. I'm not saying they're true, but Yo, I'm man, just saying they're more true. And guess what? There are other stereotypes where there's actually like more wiggle room. There's more like standard deviations where you can actually change that narrative. You got to identify which ones are stuck. Like the stereotype that Asians are short, how are you going to change it? I guess you can with nutrition and highlighting the top but anyway they're, it they're, is true these 20 year olds are a little bit taller yeah, they nowadays are, but i'm just saying like if asians are generally shorter that's not one that you're going to be able to change you got to attack some of the other ones well i'll tell you certain stereotypes go away and then new stereotypes are born i would say no longer do people think that all asians know kung fu like that's not a stereotype because i think uh we all realize that uh, a lot of them don't stand from another point of view how that's absolutely inappropriate but from a personal level I'm not offended. I'm not hurt. I'm shocked that the very pretty Hoppa girl is not offended by full Asian stereotypes. How could that be? For some reason, some of those stereotypes of being Asian don't really apply to half of me. So I don't know, I guess. You know, my whole thing about Hoppas is I really don't care that they're not offended. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let's say, for example, people say the worst things to them about Asian people and it, you know, because it doesn't really apply to their situation, they don't really care. That's okay for them because we're all human. We're all born with a different set of cards and those set of cards interface with the preconceived notions of the group, et cetera, et cetera. However, I don't think that they should like speak for the whole group of full Asians because the truth is some of the full Asians are more gonna be like affected by those stereotypes because they fit in with them more. That's almost like saying, Andrew, hey, uh, you know, it's really weird, Andrew, as a really rich guy. When people make fun of poor people, I'm not offended. <laughs> but the growing up with like Asian men have small penises and all sorts of other emasculating kind of stereotypes. Those kind of stereotypes play into like, why can't I be the love interest? Because I have a small penis, but I don't actually know that. And why does it matter? I mean, I think that all Asian guys are offended by it, but I do think that like different groups are like balanced out by like positive stereotypes. Specifically, Andrew, you know who guys I see care less about the small dick stereotype, Andrew? What, guys who are like 6'5"? I will say this, uh, Korean guys and Filipino guys care less, not because they're known for having big old dongs, but it's because they got like the K-pop and sort of the hip hop thing to counterbalance. No, they have other stylistic things that kind of make up for it that can make them cool and desirable. Because as we know, like, I don't want to make it sound like all women only care about the meat size, all right? They care about like how cool you are, how good of a guy you are, how you can take care of them and stuff like that. But stylistically, yes, Koreans and Filipinos, usually they got a lock on the, on the swag more. Yeah, so I think that that's why like more the Chinese guy and the Via guy were a little bit complaining about it, uh, possibly less counterbalancing stereotypes. You say, when, when the statement is Asian stereotypes are funny, I'm often thinking about Western stereotypes about, about Asians. And I'm like, yeah. no, it's not funny. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I think that this is a common aspect of human nature, right? It's okay when you make fun of your own cousin, but when somebody makes fun of your cousin, you gotta fight them. And it's like, uh, I would like to get to a point where we could almost all be like Russell Peters. Russell Peters was one of the first guys I saw to have this like 
Interpol global passport to like make fun of everybody from an insider perspective. And I always thought that was super cool, but Andrew, it was only possible because you could tell he really wasn't that racist in his heart and he cared to learn a lot about everybody. So the interest in the heart was there. I'm telling you, people are not going to stop making fun of you for being Asian even 10, 15 years from now. So you better come up with some good comebacks. What? You, you mean that we're still gonna hear it in the future? Y you better come up with some jokes, man, and you better have them ready to go so you can shoot them at them. All right, now we're getting into some serious topics here. This next question is, do you agree Asians have it easier than other minorities? When you say it has it easier, I think it discounts the amount of work that's gone into building up, building those communities up, people working up towards you know, becoming professionals or white collar professionals. Like, I don't think they have it, Asians have it easier. I think many Asians have just fought harder. I don't, I'm not saying the other communities don't, I just think that I think they have earned it. I do agree that Asian Americans are like whatever status we do or do not have or perceived status or metric bar bar barometer, you know, however people are ranking us against other groups, like whatever we did, Asians did work for it. Like if you look at videos from like New York in like 1920, there are still Chinese signs for Chinese laundromats in restaurants, like in the first videos ever taken of Manhattan. So it goes to show you Asians, been on the grind, sacrificing their life, not being cool in an MTV, BET, VH1 type of way or any sort of Elvis type of way. Like we didn't be not cool for a hundred years to not have things. That That is a honest perspective. Now, I'm, I'm not saying there's not credence to the other side of the argument, but literally anybody ignoring that is crazy. Yeah, I think one thing people really need to remember is that if you for a second wanna believe that it's easier for Asians to succeed, I mean, I would attribute it to the fact that our community is about those things. Like there's a lot of different like after school things and like every other Asian family that you meet, maybe at least like 60 or 70% of them care about education. So within the community, they just value it a lot more. So that whole idea of being competitive and getting education and getting a good job is just more common within our culture, to be honest. So I think if, if you wanna point to the culture as the reason, I, I think that's part of why Asians are so successful. We as Asian Americans have to understand that we are props for white supremacy when we buy into the idea that all of this stuff that we've gotten is purely through our hard work. Okay, this is not wrong, but I do think that it's so hard and so complicated when you look at society. Are most of the people in America that have old money and generational, hyper multi-generational wealth white because they're rich or are they rich because they're white? So it, it, it does get very murky. I get what they're saying, but one thing is it's like, I just don't know what Asians are supposed to do if we're living in a white system. So of course, everything can be framed as the white person trying to use this as a wedge. The NBA and like hip hop, by some people's estimations are used as a wedge issue against black people to keep them away from like STEM subjects, right? Because it shows that their only pathway to create multi-generational wealth is through sports and entertainment, but those have a lower rate of success in terms of like the pool of, you know, how many people achieve it. So are, are those no. things, when you frame it that way, also white supremacy? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people look at how Asians want to work at white-owned corporations, which, I mean, just by chance, obviously, a lot of the corporations are owned by white people and make white people money. But I think a lot of people look at it and be like, okay, see, like, Asians only want to work for white people and only want to, like, uphold white supremacy. I just think that a lot of people have to put it in perspective and say, okay, well, you know, you could say the same thing about a lot of athletes and musicians who are black, who are working and making money for record labels that are owned by non-black people. So are they props for white supremacy too? Or is it different because at least they're getting paid and heavily generously being compensated? I mean, I can see what she's trying to say. I just think it's a very loaded statement and I think it just deserved a lot more nuance. Yeah, I just think to like always frame things in that one context is tough. I mean, that's like saying, any black person that gets a job at a white company is also supporting white supremacy because obviously who are the shareholders? Most of the shareholders, if you look at the stats, are white. And just because it's a white owned company doesn't mean that it's like promoting white supremacy. I mean, maybe if you think by nature of just simply the CEO and founder being white, then that's how you see it. Then yeah, I guess every company is like 
upholding white supremacy. I guess what I'm saying is blanket statements like this, there's not 0% truth to them, but I just don't like the way it could be twisted because it could go really downside from here. Blanket statements like this are a little bit dangerous to say because it kind of does breed a lot of anti-Asian sentiment unnecessarily. Like, listen, when I was on the basketball team, right, I was the only person on my entire basketball team that had good grades, literally. I was the only person. So did, was I trying to like uphold white supremacy and make all my teammates that were black or brown or even white? I mean, I had like blue collar, like white teammates too. Was I trying to make them look bad by my grades? You know what I mean? Like, or was I just being Asian? And maybe I see, could see somebody being perceiving it that way. But Andrew, when all my teammates, my white teammates, my black teammates and my Latino teammates went off and had all these girls liking them and they were all getting asked to Tolo in high school and I wasn't getting asked by any girls, were they trying to, subjugate me as an Asian man and make me look like a dickless nerd? Or was that just how it played out? Next clip is asking people if they would move back to their mother country permanently for any reason at all. It's a funny thing that happens when I go back to China, which is like the feeling that I never get here, which is like when you walk onto a public street, you feel like you're not identified by what you look like, which is amazing. But that being said, like I feel culturally, I'm American. I love being here. And I think that being like an individual with freedom is like part of who I am in the sense that like, I wouldn't necessarily fit in in China. And I feel like so much of the time we're like asked to be like, well, are you Asian or are you American? It's like, no, like I'm Asian American. You know, I hear this a lot. And honestly, this is such like a 20 years ago type of thinking. I do not encourage Asian Americans to give this type of cop out because literally we come from an ancient motherland. I don't care which culture you come from in Asia. It is ancient. It is thousands of years old. And then we're coming to America, which is really almost like hitting the super mushroom. But you know, the super mushroom doesn't do much, Andrew, unless you're already a Mario Kart character. Whatever Asian culture you're from, it almost provides you your basis. And America with this supercharged like McDonald's, P.T. Barnum and Bailey, sort of like hypercharged capitalism and democracy, that's like hitting the super Mario mushroom power up in Mario Kart. One literally cannot exist without the other. One makes it super fly and dope and modern, but the other one is the basis. So to really treat America a 250 year old country that is based off like a lot of German and British stuff. And uh, then like your ancient Asian culture that's thousands of years old, to put them as equivalent is definitely not true. Yeah, I think it's funny when a lot of Asian Americans are like born here or they move here at a young age and then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, I don't know what I am. I'm just American, I swear. I'm like, yo, you had like 3000 years of culture back there. I'm sure it doesn't get washed away in one generation, man, or in like 20 years. Also, I just think like being born in America, it gives you American citizenship, yes, but it doesn't mean culturally you're American. Being culturally American, in my opinion, is still something that you kind of have to work for or like fall into, or you have to somehow build up some points because I know plenty of Asians who are born and raised in America who to me, I would not say feel culturally American by the technical standard. Um, so I just think that as Asian Americans, and you know, I'm one of them that, you know, I don't really speak the motherland language very well, so I could easily fall into this, but I mean, getting to know your Asian culture, your Eastern culture, your ancient culture is very important. And I think that's the same for a lot of like black Americans who they're, they're now looking at the roots back to Africa. Where do they come from of Africa or native Americans? Like what about their tribe and stuff like that? I think everybody's trying to do it right now. The most interesting McDonald's burgers, by the way, I love the regular double cheeseburger. Very, very good. I'm just saying this, the most interesting McDonald's burgers any country you travel to is the one that's been localized to mix with like a, a, a localized food. Those are easily the most interesting McDonald's items globally. You know what I mean? Like the even, let's just pick another white culture, Canadian. The poutine fries at McDonald's in Canada are the most interesting item on a Canada McDonald's menu. Ooh -wee, poutine. Yeah, yeah, maple syrup on everything. Overall, man, I just think this. Obviously, Asian Americans do disagree, but it's not necessarily because of just growing up in different families and like, oh, you grew up on the East Coast, I grew up in the West Coast, I grew up in the Midwest. It's actually how deeply you've thought about these things and how many reps you've seen globally. Like, I think a lot of people are just like, oh yeah, you just lived a different life than somebody, so that's how you arrived at a different conclusion. That's not necessarily true. Literally, 
maybe people who have thought about something 100,000 times and been through 100,000 reps would generally come to the same conclusion. You know what I mean? It's just because some people are like such rookies and novices and might even stay rookies and novices throughout their whole life when it comes to like learning about knowledge of self or how does being from the East interface with the West and what does it even mean to be American in this 250 year old rebel country? You know, was it even about Protestants escaping from Catholicism or was it about taxes? And what does it even mean to be from the East and which cultures and tribes do I emanate from? Like if people don't do that research, you're always going to be at the rookie level and the rookies can just come up with wildly different conclusions. But I think that the experts generally end up somewhere in the same range. And to be honest, I know I'm going on a crazy rant. Actors are almost always in the rookie to low middle level. I have never really seen that many actors that were like high middle to like high tier thinkers about being like Asian with the West. Maybe Daniel Day Kim. That's the only guy I could think of. My overall takeaway is, man, uh, identity is a very complicated thing. And, you know, I, I feel for anybody who had identity issues growing up, whether they're half Asian or full Asian or they look Asian or don't look Asian or they grew up here or there. I'm just saying, I guess that, you know, there's so much material out there nowadays. There's so many YouTube videos. Obviously, me and David, we've made hundreds and hundreds of uh, maybe a thousand videos essentially talking about this type of thing, trying to help people figure it out. So I think just use the resources that you have available. Identity is easier now than ever before. As complicated as it is, there's more resources and more help to help you figure it out. So just, um, you know, I'm not saying it's easy again, but but there's a lot of resources out there. So please look into them. Study your, your ancient culture. Study the current Asian American culture. Um, and, and, you know, you won't be as confused like some of the people in this video, which I understand, but just do the work. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments section below. What did you think of the Jubilee video? What did you think of our takeaways? Just let us know, man. Do all Asian Americans think different? I'm sure they do, but how do you think? Let us know, and until next time, we out. Peace.